Greetings and welcome to No BS Baking, got JP here. Now today I want to talk a little bit about par baking. Uh, lots of video um, channels and uh, online resources regarding par baking. However, I feel that there's a lot of information that's being missed from it. Uh, as an example, the industrial baking sector or the commercial baking sector, they start, it all starts with formulation. And there's some key changes that need to be made with respect to formulas to ensure optimum quality uh, par-baked breads. It goes beyond just baking them until they're pale in color and then rebaking them again. So with all of these things in mind, I'm going to give you some good tips and some information that you can use to make awesome uh, par-baked breads. When it comes to par-bake, there's a vast assortment of bread and roll products that you can make. So what many websites and cooking and baking channels out there don't tell you is that there is some formulation considerations when you're planning to bake par break bread. Number one, you should increase or add, if your formula or recipe doesn't call for it, at least add some fats or oils into your dough. Now, if you're using only oils, you should include an emulsifier. The big boys, the industrial baking sector, the commercial baking sector, if they're making par-baked par products, the chances are very good that they're including oils and emulsifiers in the dough. Now, <clears throat> monoglycerides re retard the crumb hardening. Uh, they lock up water. You want, if you followed my um, video on emulsifiers, you know that uh, they stop or slow down the separation of oil and water inside your dough system and ultimately will improve the crumb quality of frozen par-baked bread. Now this is getting a little bit more tech, but we've also covered this off in some of my other videos. You can add ascorbic acid and or in conjunction with SSL, which is another one that I really, really like, and you will get increased dough stability during freezing. And in the case of SSL, you're going to get some emulsification benefits also. So you're going to get a stronger, more stable product through freezing, ultimately giving you better finished quality after the second bake. Now, if you're using a formulation that is very, very lean, you might want to consider adding a very small amount of sugar, not so much really to impart sweetness to your product, but more to aid in the coloring of the second stage of baking. Now, par-baked breads are usually baked to around 70 to 80% of the total bake time. And the reason for this is that you have to bake them um, long enough to, number one, kill the yeast. Number two, make sure that your structure of your product is set so you don't have it collapsing in. And ultimately, to ensure that the internal crumb is stable and sterile. Now, the first stage of baking, I generally recommend around 350 to 400 degrees, leaning more to the 400 degree side, um, because I also am a big believer in baking as quickly as possible and to minimize the amount of moisture that you drive off of your product. However, if you want that really thick crust, uh, then lower bake temperatures are um, an option for you. So as I just mentioned previously, longer bake times and higher temperatures equal a thicker crust. Longer bake times and will equal a drier finished product. So you finished baking your product and now it's time to plan for the freezing and storage of it. So immediately after cooling, you, what you want to do is you want to place it into a freezer gauge quality bag and uh, that seals really well. Immediately put it in your freezer. Okay, the idea behind par baked is to freeze it as quickly as possible. So if you've got a, an old refrigerator with a freezer up top and it does its job and freezes really well, but you have an option of a deep freeze sitting downstairs or something like that, I would highly recommend you put it into the deep freeze uh, and um, try to freeze it as fast as possible. 
Now, once you put it in there, make sure that it's in a safe location. You don't want to get it squished by a tub of ice cream that you put on top of it or you're shuffling around things inside your, your freezer uh, prior to it being fully and thoroughly frozen all the way through. So just keep that in mind. So when you're finally ready to use it, keep it in a plastic wrap until it's fully thawed. You usually need, depending on how warm your kitchen is, um, but I would say you should give it at least a couple of hours just to fully thaw. Obviously, if you're in a very hot climate, then that, would, that time will be dramatically reduced. But you want fully thawed, you remove it from the plastic and place it into a preheated oven. Bake for about eight or 15 minutes. All ovens are different. And at a minimum of around 200 degrees Celsius or approximately 400 because the time and temperature now is about baking it quickly but getting enough heat on it that you get your crust to color up beautifully. Now, steam will not increase the volume in the second bake. However, if you do use a little bit of steam, it has been shown to reduce the amount of moisture loss that you get during the final bake-off. So there are some great considerations uh, for you to create beautiful partially baked breads at home. Thank you very much for watching the video. I hope you learned a little bit of something out of this one. I always try to give a little bit of information in there that's a little different from some of the other websites. But if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to drop me a line. I'd be happy to answer any of your baking questions. And remember, please give me a like and a subscribe uh, down below. It really, really helps with this YouTube stuff and especially when you're starting off like I am. So uh, thank you, we'll see you again next time on No BS Baking.